Hey folks, in this episode I will show you how to make these procedural masks in Blender Shader Editor. These masks can be used to highlight features on landscapes or even adding grime onto buildings. Familiarising yourself with these masking fundamentals will help you conquer the shader pipeline. So without further ado, let's get to it. So I'm just going to delete everything in my scene. I might keep the lamp and the camera. Before we start, we're going to have to enable a couple of add-ons. So go to Edit, Preferences, and under Add-ons, type in Node for the Node Wrangler. Then enable this add-on here. The next add-on, type in Land for Landscape. And then enable the Landscape add-on here. Once you've enabled both add-ons, go to this button here. Click Save Preferences. And those add-ons will be enabled every time you load up Blender. So the first thing I'll do, so I'm going to add Shift A, Mesh and we'll go for landscape. I'll then open up this panel here and we'll change the settings. I'm going to change the operator preset to volcano. I'll then choose a random seed, something that I like, maybe something around there. And I'm also going to increase the subdivisions to 256. You don't have to do this. There we go, got a bit more detail. Let's just close this panel here. I'm going to bring this up and I'm going to change this to the shader editor. If you're going to do this in Eevee, you're going to have to enable ambient oculation here. I'm going to go to cycles, but I'll work in the workbench view. With my object selected, I'm going to click new for a new material. Let's just drag this up so we can better see what we're doing here. So the first mask we're going to make will be an ambient oculation detailing mask. That's easy. So shift A, input, and we'll choose geometry. And then we'll go for shift A, input, ambient oculation. And then shift A, converter, and we'll go for color ramp. And then shift A, color, and then we'll choose mix color. So I'm going to click normal from this geometry node into the normal value of the ambient oculation. I'll drag the color into the color ramp and this color will be the mix factor for this color mix node. The top input is going to be white and the bottom input is going to be black. I'm then going to increase my distance on my ambient oculation node to two. Okay and then I'm going to plug the result from the mix node into the base color of my principal BSDF. I'm going to increase my roughness as well and then it's simply a case of dragging these flags until we've got something that we like. So I'm going to go for a roundabout there. Okay, now we can use this factor to add grime into our scene. So that's our first mask. So I'm going to box select all these. I'm going to hit Control J to add a frame and then F2 to rename that to AO Mask. Okay, let's make the second mask. So this is going to be a snow mask, but you can also use it to add sand or dust on top of objects. So I'm going to hit Shift A, Input, and we go for Geometry. Shift A, Input, and we go for Texture Coordinate. Shift A, Converter, Separate XYZ. Shift A, Converter, Color Ramp. Shift A, Vector, and we'll go for Mapping. Shift A, Texture, Gradient Texture. We'll duplicate this color ramp. So that's Shift D just to duplicate and then it will be two mixed colors. So Shift A, add color, mix color. We'll pop that one there and then we'll Shift D and duplicate that one there. So we'll work on this top section first. So I'm going to take my normal into the vector of the separate XYZ. We'll take the Z value into the color ramp and then the color into the mix factor of this mix color node. The top input is going to be black and the bottom input is going to be white. We then drag the result into the principal BSDF and we're going to drag these flags until we've got kind of a result that we like. I'm also going to change this to B spline. It gives us a bit more level of control. And then I'll click this plus button to add another flag and I'll change it to complete black. And with this, we just get an extra level of control. Okay, so the next element of this one, we're gonna plug the generated coordinates into the vector of the mapping node. Let's just drag this up a bit. I'm then going to take the mapping into the gradient texture. I'll then take the factor of the gradient texture into the color ramp. I'll then take the color ramp and plug that into the base color of the principal BSDF. As you can see, the mapping's off, which is why we added this mapping node. So on the location for X, Y, and Z, I'm gonna type in 0.5. And on the Y rotation, I'm gonna type 90. So now the mapping should be correct. I'm also going to convert this to B spline and we'll add another flag. We'll drag this across and we'll set it to black. So now we've just got that extra level of control there. Now to mix these two together, it's fairly straightforward. I'm going to take this top mix color. The result from that will go into the factor. And then from this color ramp, this will go into socket B. And this top socket, this is going to be black. And now I'll plug this into the principal BSDF. So what this does, we've got our snow mask over here. And then this one will can control the height of which the snow will fall on the bottom layer of a mountain or something like that. You'd want this to be grass, for example. So we'd use this to mask out the grass. So we've got a nice little gradient. So now I'm going to box select all of these. I'm going to hit Control J to add a frame. I'll then hit F2 and we'll rename this to Snow Mask. 
the third and final mask is going to be a ground gradient so i'm going to hit shift a input and we'll go for texture coordinates i'll then hit shift a add vector mapping i'll then hit shift a texture gradient texture i'll then hit shift a texture noise texture hit shift a converter color ramp I'll duplicate that by hitting shift D. So we've got two color ramps and then finally a color mix color. So I'm going to take the generated coordinates into the mapping node. I'm going to plug that mapping node into the gradient texture. The factor from the gradient texture will go into the color ramp and then this color ramp will plug straight into the principal BSDF. Again, we've got this same gradient, which is mapped completely wrong. So I'm going to select X, Y, and Z location on the mapping node, type 0.5. And then on the Y rotation, I'm going to hit 90 for 90 degrees and now we've got that perfect gradient going on there again i'm going to convert this to a b spline we're going to add two flags to this one this flag will be black and the second flag is going to be pure white so i just drag these across okay we've got a nice gradient going there i'll then go to the texture coordinates and take the object coordinate and we'll plug that into the noise texture we'll change the noise texture to 4d i'll then plug the factor from the noise texture into the color ramp and then i'll plug the color from the color ramp into the principal bsdf it's going to drag these flags across to around about there maybe we'll set it to 0.5 to be precise i'll then grab this mixed color node and plug it in between here so this color ramp is going to be in socket A. This color ramp is going to be the factor and this will be pure white. And on the mix method, I'm going to choose subtract. Excellent. So all that does is add noise around here. So it's not one complete straight line because nothing's straight in nature. And we can adjust the fall off to how we see fit. Something to around about there. Excellent. So now I'm going to box select all of these, hit control J and I'm going to hit F2 to rename this to ground gradient now we're going to mix all these together i'll show you a couple of use cases for this so for this top mask i'm going to hit shift a add color and we'll go for mix color i'll plug this into here and from this mix color subtract we're going to plug that as the factor and this bottom socket is going to be green maybe we can adjust this slightly a bit more so we'll set that to green then we're going to duplicate this node shift d and we'll plug this into the top socket and we'll take the snow mask from the mix into the factor we'll set the top socket to be black and this green socket we're going to set to white so now we've got snow appearing or dust whatever you like to use it for let's just drag these across here so now i'm going to duplicate that node one more time i'm going to plug this into the top socket now these two are going to serve as like rock or mud so i'm going to set this one to brown so what the darkish brown maybe around there i'm going to hit shift c shift v and we'll just darken this one up. And now I'll plug this AO mask into the factor. So as you can see, we've got dark spots appearing now. And it's just simply a case of moving these flags around until you're happy with your results. I'm gonna move mine to across there. Okay, let's just see what it's like in cycles quick. It does look a bit different in cycles, so you will have to sort of tweak your flags, adjust them how you see fit. Now to add the mission for the volcano look, we're going to the principal BSDF. I'm going to open up this emission tab. We'll set this color to sort of a bright orange color. I'm then going to add a color ramp. Shift A, add converter color ramp. I'm going to flip this color ramp by clicking this button here. Flip color ramp. We'll just drag these flags across to around about there. I'm then going to take the color from the ambient oculation directly into here. I'm going to hold down shift and hold down my right mouse button and strike through and it'll add these noodles here. This is just so I can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna do that again. Just drag this across to around about there. Okay. Now I'll drag my color from my color ramp into the strength of the emission on the principal BSDF. And now we can adjust these flags until we've got something that we like maybe something to around there. To turn the strength of the emission up, it's simple. You just go converter, math, and you put that in between and you set this to multiply. And let's say multiply it by 10, so it's a lot brighter. Excellent. And to change the color of this, we can still use the same mask. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, add color, and we'll go for mix color. I'll then hit Control C over this color, paste it in here, Control V, Control V. Maybe we'll turn this to red. And if I plug this into the color, and then plug the AO mask into the factor. I can then add another color ramp. So I'm just gonna hit Shift A, Converter, and we'll go for color ramp. I'll plug this in between here, and now I can drag these flags, and that will determine where the red will be. I'll drag this across for the yellow, orange yellow in the center, where it's hottest, and as it cools down, going to the outside, it's red. Okay, maybe I can reduce that slightly, and then we'll have to adjust these. 
So that's the masking fundamentals in a nutshell. Remember these three mask setups here. They're really helpful. They can be good for adding grime onto buildings. So let's look at that in Eevee. So we go to Eevee, I click this button and that's the result in Eevee. If you scale the landscape up, say like S10 to scale it up by 10, it's going to dramatically affect your ambient oculation. So what you'll have to do is go to your ambient oculation and increase your distance or reduce your distance. And then the rest is in your color ramps. Hit control A to apply the scale. Right folks, I'm gonna quickly give you a bonus mask which shouldn't take too long. It's a really handy mask. So I'm going to hit shift A, add shader, and we'll go for mix shader. I'll pop that in between the principal BSDF and the material output. I'll then hit shift A, shader, and we'll go for transparent. We'll pop this transparent into the bottom socket. I'm then gonna hit shift A, input, and we'll go for texture coordinate. Shift A, converter, vector math. And we're going to change this to distance so let's go into here we'll select distance i'm then going to hit shift a converter color ramp we'll pop the color ramp there so i'm going to take the generated coordinate into the vector of the vector math i'll then take the vector math into the color ramp and then i'll pop the color ramp into the mix shader we are getting transparency but as you can see it's mapped to the corner and to rectify that we we'll just type in 0.5 for X, Y, and Z, and now we've got a transparency mask. It's important to always save your project. I'm gonna click save as, and I'll save it as subscribe. Thanks folks, you legends. So that's the tutorial in a nutshell. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. Have a great day, level up, and thanks for watching.